But the celebs that, like, have been telling everyone to quarantine... Um, oh, how are they looking? Well, yeah, they look terrible. This is the thing, you guys. And I, I'm not... Okay, here's the thing. I truly believe that when you live your life um, a certain way and you think that, like, you can lie to people and be greedy and, and, and live alternate lives and think that, like, it's not going to show in your looks... It does eventually, because this is why. Because everyone has, you know, like, your own feelings of what you feel is right for yourself and what's not. And when you're lying to yourself, you end up usually getting depressed, which usually leads to weight gain. So you'll see, as people start to lie to themselves, lie to the... When celebs are lying to us, telling us to quarantine that there was this deadly virus, then you start to see they get ugly on the outside. And it's so true. You know how, like you say, when someone's ugly on the inside, it starts to show on the outside. For a while, they were able to, um, you know, trick us. For a long time, celebs um, were able to, you know, look really nice for a photo shoot and then look like crap most of the rest of the time. And then we're all trying to live up to the expectation of the photo shoot they did where they never look like that except for that one time, you know. But now as we're seeing with social media, they're showing us their daily lives and you're saying, oh, for the most part, most of these celebs aren't in shape on a daily basis. They look like Sislex. crap. They did so that, you know, and yeah, it's just like out of mind. But anyways, so here's the thing. The reason why I bring up the celebs is because... Um, a lot of the the female celebs especially, but males too, have eating disorders. And the eating disorder they have primarily is bulimia. And I talk about that because I was bulimic for 15 years, and people think that it's like, a lot of times people think it's like an obscure disorder. Like my dad, <laughs> he one time, okay, I had been bulimic for several years, and then I finally told my dad, and he then got me all these books and tried to, tell me about bulimia, right? So, but he tells me one time, he goes, I was reading about it, and apparently, some celebs are bulimic as well. What? I was like, yeah, Dad, you think? Where do you think I got the idea? I mean, he couldn't, he thought I was, like, the only one in the world that, like, he thought I came up with the idea and that I was insane. Like, he he thought it was the, the he couldn't believe I did it. Hey, he thought, be true. he thought, who, who would ever eat food and throw up? He said, that is just so wasteful, and there's children starving and, you know, whatever. And now I agree with him, but at the time, I was like, I don't know, I have Chico's an eating Chico's disorder. Chico's says Sislak might have an eating disorder because he eats too much. Yeah, and, you know, I call him a fat son. I get the guy's not that fat. He's he's pretty average, if anything. But I call him fat because I, he's greedy. And when I see certain people... um, I call them fat in the sense of you can just tell everything they do is greedy. And you can tell some people that um, they clearly overeat um, of the wrong things. And whether it be they eat and throw up or they just choose to eat and keep it. And But you'll see some people, and I just feel like he's one of those guys. He might be bulimic. He's not that fat, so he might be bulimic. I think his wife's bulimic. I think his wife is definitely bulimic. Um, uh I don't know if you guys know, but a lot of Asian women are bulimic. Um, that's one of the um, little uh, things they don't like you guys to know. Like, uh, that's why a lot of Asian women are still very small. But it's very common for Asian women to be bulimic. And I know that sounds racist, like it's... I, uh, I know it's a stereotype, but no, I've, I've met a shit ton of Asian women that were all bulimic. Like, almost every... Asian person I have ever interacted with was bulimic for a female. And they were very... No one knew. I mean, they were so good about it. And um, his wife is, and I just feel like she is because he's kind of chubby. And this is the thing. Bulimics, often their partner will be chubbier than them because they will be throwing up, but then they'll be feeding their husbands. So, like, when I was bulimic, I was thin and Jai Rich was really fat because he was bulimic too, but he didn't ever do it as well as me. So, like, a lot of times the men will maybe just throw up a little bit, but not as, as good as the females. And now, this may seem crazy to some of you guys if you've never heard this, but what I'm trying to say is so many of the celebs are bulimic, and especially Hailey Bieber, Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, Miley Cyrus, um, who else do I know for sure? Those ones... Who did we think? That, oh, oh, uh, we were saying uh, Hugh Jackman the other day. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Um, and um, 
Who was the other one? Yeah, and the guy we just saw the other... Oh, uh, well, Elton, Elton John is actually coming out that he's bulimic. Lady Gaga? Uh, Lady Gaga. Uh, yeah, she's actually come out before that she struggled with that. Celine and then... Dion. Oh, Celine Dion. Yeah, Celine Dion is bulimic, big time. Now, sometimes people say, oh, well, that person's fat. How are they bulimic? And then they'll say a thin one. You can be all extremes during bulimia. And during, you can even, at, like... Some people, while they're bulimic, can be fat and thin. I've been both while I was bulimic. It just depends on what you're eating and the amount you're eating. Because even if you throw it up, your body still holds on to the sugar. So if you're still eating a lot and throwing up, sometimes you can still be heavy. Or sometimes you can be thin during that time. Because if you're so crazy about it, then you can be really real thin while you're... It just depends. You have ups and downs. So you can be fat and be bulimic and you can be thin and be bulimic. So it's not necessarily... You can't say... We're like it anorexics are just skinny because they don't eat but bulimics can be regular size they can be super thin or they can be overweight and they can all be bulimic so um but some of the really um easy ways to tell a bulimics are one thing they often start to get raspy voices um and a lot of these singers can't sing anymore i don't know if you guys notice um one thing like ariana grande has changed the way she sings like all of her songs are so much easier she used to sing these songs that were like she hit these insane notes she didn't even go for those anymore most of her songs are like what was that one she was doing the sound of music uh, the sound of music one she did the other day no. yeah that little one it was like oh, they yeah, redid that? the sound of music what about that kendrick girl who Anna Kendrick, yes. Anna Kendrick is big time bulimic. Oh, yeah, who was what we were watching? Yeah, all those. You guys, so many of the celebs are bulimic. And the reason why I bring this up is it's not fair because you have young people that are looking up to these celebs and thinking, I want to look like them. And, oh, and I'm going to listen to them about this quarantine. All these things. They listen to their advice about everything. And these celebs are lying to you. And then they're bulimic. And then they'll go and sell you a product saying, oh, I used this Slim Fast or this Nutri Bar or this Balance Bar or this protein shake or I'm vegan or I'm this and that. As they throw up, they might even be vegan but they're vegan bulimics like yeah you know what veganism as i told you guys will make you gain a lot of weight and you will resort to bulimia a lot of times when you're a vegan because it's a high sugar diet and high sugar is what will encourage bulimia because what will happen is you'll get candida overgrowth and then you'll just want to keep eating you can't stop because the candida want the sugar um, and candida is a yeast in your system and when you eat really processed sugary um a lot of antibiotics things and you get your antibiotics even just from the um when you're eating the conventional food that they give it to the plants and the animals the hormones and steroids and you're getting all that crap um all that the gmos all that crap and caffeine the other big thing is the caffeine you guys caffeine is what is making everyone fat and no one will listen to me if you want to lose weight stop drinking caffeine it's as simple as that. Everyone wants to think caffeine is good for them so they don't listen to me. But I'm telling you, if you want to lose weight, stop drinking caffeine. Caffeine is meth, you guys. I don't know if you realize this. Look it up. It's it's not a methamphetamine, but it's another it's form. It's in the same class as meth. It literally says caffeine is a, I forget the actual, it's a meth something. I don't know the whole science word. But what that means, it, it, is a lo it is low doses of meth. You guys are doing meth on a daily basis when you drink caffeine. That's why everyone's all wiry and gets fidgety and they sweat and stuff. It's low doses of meth. That's what caffeine is. You guys are addicted to meth. And then you caffeine addicts have the audacity to go online and call other people meth heads. That's what's hilarious. I'm like, you guys who are addicted to meth are the ones that are calling everyone else meth heads. Uh, it's just funny. It's the irony of it. Um, but listen to this. Caffeine is meth. And the reason why everyone is getting fat is because, do you think meth addicts look good on a regular, like after many years of doing it? They look like shit. And so do caffeine-aholics. Year after year, you guys are looking shittier and shittier. Your skin's getting dehydrated. You just look like meth out Caffeine freaks. It is not good. You look all old. Your skin gets like old and um, dried out and just uh, uh, you start to age. I've gotten younger looking since I quit caffeine. I was getting really old looking. You might think I look old now. You should have seen me a couple years ago. I looked way older. I'm 35. 
But I was looking like 40 when I was 26, when I was jacked up on caffeine, and I was bulimic, and alcohol at the time. And Jared was just like, man, you look like you're 40. It's ridiculous. I was getting like all these lines in my face. It was really bad. So I started researching, and I realized caffeine is what's making everyone fat. And I'll tell you why. Because caffeine, what it is, is it numbs your senses and your hormones. That's what it does. That's what meth does too. And then what happens when you numb your senses, you feel more energetic and you feel less hungry. And you feel like, oh, nothing's bothering me as much because it's like everything's numb. So it'd be like even pain is kind of numb. Like everything's just numbed. Do you know what I'm saying? So like, so you don't realize that you're feeling these things. That's why you think you got energy. It didn't give you energy. It just made you feel not as tired. So you still are just as tired. And this is what happens. Once you numb your senses, one of the ones that you numb is your hormone for insulin. Insulin regulates your blood sugar. When you numb those senses, then your blood sugar rises. And that's what you get from and That's what people love, that blood sugar. Oh, I, got, I feel jolt because your blood sugar rises. The problem with your blood sugar rising is then your body produces insulin. And Insulin tells your body to store fat. So every time you're having a cup of coffee, you're actually telling your body to store fat. And then once the coffee wears off, all of those other hormones that you had numbed start going again. And now you're going to have even more insulin. And insulin tells your body to store fat. It tells you to go in a dormant hibernation mode. So every time you're having a cup of coffee, you're actually telling your body to store fat. So year after year, just from coffee, you are gaining so much weight. And me and Jedi Rich, just by cutting out coffee, we lost so much weight. I mean, we were just looking at a video. He was making this new video coming out. And, like, it's two years ago. We were dancing um, part, some of the clips. And we thought we looked good. And when we look at it now, we're like, oh, my God, we were so fat. And we thought we were, like, rocking it. And now just from cutting out the caffeine, because we cut it out in 2018, like, we've just toned up. And without really changing anything else, I mean, we do all organics. And we... Um, for those of you that around know our diet all again in a second, but we've been doing that diet for a while, and then it, we were still being he like struggling with our weight, feeling heavy, feeling bloated. I was feeling bloated all the time. Once we cut out the caffeine, it was like weight shred off, and no one wants to let go of the caffeine because you guys are addicted. Caffeine, look it up. The actual definition: it is a drug. There's no joke about it. They say it is a drug that is unregulated in most countries. I say it is a meth, a meth, I forget the, it's not methamphetamine, it's meth something drug that is, um, that affects your central nervous system that is not regulated in most countries. That's what it, literally the definition of caffeine is. Look it up, something similar to that. Um, and people act like, oh, since it's legal, it's all right. You are doing a legal drug is what you're doing. The government made that legal. They also made cigarettes legal and they also made alcohol legal. It doesn't mean it's good for you. They also allow all of this terrible food that's horrible for us. So we do all organics, which people misunderstand what organics are. I hear this all the time. They think organics is somehow connected with vegetarian or vegan, which for one thing, it is not at all. It's not at all. Organics have nothing to do with vegan or vegetarian. I'll explain why people think that in a second. Organics mean food from this earth. That's all. It, it, that's what it should mean. Now it's become a little bit tainted like you can get organic ch chocolate chips you've kind of lost it there but it's supposed to mean food from the earth that you didn't have all processed and you know have to make in a lab and do all this stuff it should be like things that you can pick eat an animal you can kill and eat now organics we eat meat we eat primarily beef that's all we eat is um, during the shutdown, we had to have a little bit of um, wild fish, and we had to have organic chicken for a minute. I don't want to do that again. I did not feel good after that, but so we do organic beef. Um, and people ask me all the time. I say, oh, I do organic. Like, oh, so you're vegan? I say, no, actually the exact opposite. I eat an all-beef diet. I eat all-animal beef. So no, organics is not vegan. Vegan means you don't eat animal products. Or consume them in any way. They don't even use it like in their hair products and stuff. All my stuff's vegan because that's just the... Everyone's on that kick now. You can't even get non-vegan 
um, hair products now. I'm like, man, I bet you the animals had nice stuff for nutrients for our hair. Thanks for taking out all their wonderful nutrients for us and giving us just the plant stuff, which I don't know why. Okay, so I was watching South Park yesterday. It was the best. It was one about um, this whole plant-based nonsense. And then uh, Randy made a weed burger. Awesome. He said it tasted like crap, but everyone loved it after a couple bites because they got stoned. It was the best. But, and then he was, you know, making this plant-based stuff, and it was a good point. They were showing um, that the guy is all about plant-based because it made more money. He didn't actually care, and that's what's happening. These people are not caring about the environment. It's like, oh, everyone wants plant-based. So that's what makes it. So in that South Park, he ends up shooting a bunch of cows because it's exactly what I said. All of these people think, let's just save all of the animals. What are y'all going to do with the animals if you really did save them? You're going to take them in? So that's what happens on the show. He doesn't want this guy making, you know, killing the cows anymore because he wants to sell his vegan burgers. And so the farmer says, fine, you can have my 300 cows. He leaves them at his farm. And that was my point I made the other day. Is like, yeah, these vegans want to save the world and want to do this and that. For one thing, eating animals is the best thing you can do for your body. And if it's organic, it's the best. But any meat is better than any other alternative. But I would recommend organics because then you're not getting the GMOs, you're not getting the steroids and hormones and antibiotics that they feed those animals. Or the plants, too, because they do that to the veggies and fruits, too. And you say, oh, well then, oh, to avoid that, I'll just do this artificial stuff. The problem with artificial is your brain will treat it as sugar. So um, even though you're thinking you're getting all of this protein, and you do get some, but your brain goes, oh, I just thought that was sugar because it doesn't know what it is. It knows stuff from the search. When they start making all this weird stuff, your brain doesn't know what to do with it, like all those artificial sugars and stuff. So it'll just produce insulin. It goes, all right, you gave me a... Because it converts everything to sugar eventually. So it's easy to just say, if I don't know what it is, I'll just call it sugar. And that's what it does. And that's why the artificial stuff... And the other problem with like the artificial meats is they already have too much sugar to protein ratio anyways. So meat primarily is zero carbs. I mean, it's not, as long as you're not putting crap on it, if you just have meat, don't be adding sauces and stuff, no carbs to whatever your protein is. Let's say seven grams of protein. Whereas these artificial ones or these, you know, these... Uh, when they got these, um, all these weird names on the, on the show, they were calling them incredible burgers or something like that. But they have all these, you know, non-beef burgers, uh, fake meat. The thing is, even with those, let's say they have seven grams of protein, they still have at least like three grams of sugar, even to that seven grams. So even if you looked at their nutrition facts, it still would be higher in sugar. And so every time you're having one of those burgers, you're getting more sugar than you would from animal protein. And sugar is not good for you. You should only have 30 grams of sugar a day, period, in any way. So that means from if your body's thinking it's all sugar, you don't want that because you're going to get fat. Bottom line, sugar and caffeine are what's making you all fat. And dairy. It's funny, they all go together with coffee, too. Sugar, caffeine, and dairy, those three. So we don't do dairy, we don't do gluten, we don't do GMOs, uh, we don't do artificial anything, no caffeine, no alcohol, we do all organics. Um, and that's how we stay in shape, and people are all call us meth heads and crackheads and this and that. We smoke weed, that's all we do. We did used to do coke many years ago. We don't anymore for one thing, we couldn't afford it, my goodness. <laughs> Jeez Louise, you have that shit, it's expensive. Uh, we only did that when we had a lot of money. But the other thing is, we don't feel the desire to anymore it's funny because when you actually allow yourself the opportunity to do what you want then you don't feel you need to do it anymore it's when you restrict yourself that you want to do something more so we gave ourselves like two solid years of doing coke and now we're like we're good on that um so it's just kind of funny people that call everyone drug addicts are just people that um, or want to do drugs more themselves because they didn't give themselves that opportunity. Like they either did a little bit or they haven't done it at all. And so online, it's really irritating because it's just kind of like a lack of knowledge, especially when the, when the thing, when they realize people on drugs don't tend to come on social media. It's not really like, like you're not going to be a blogger if you're on really anything other than weed because 
people don't realize that um, the majority of the time that you're doing it, if it's any kind of hardcore drug, you just want to be by yourself or, like, with whoever you're partying with. You're not trying to, like, talk to everyone. It's just not usually... The, once in a while, you'll see someone wasted that might get on some social media app, but it's rare. You know, like, you had Charlie Sheen, like, a couple times get on social media when he was doing his partying days. But the majority of the 20 years he partied, you didn't see him. And that's what you see with partiers. So it's funny. When I always laugh when I see it all the time. People, people were calling the uh, mayor all kinds of things she was saying um, that the casino stood open. They were calling her crackhead and stuff. I'm like, Jeez, it's just funny that they use drugs as so negative. When drugs can be very helpful to, um, to broaden your knowledge um, in the right setting, you know. Um, and our society has made them illegal. And I'm really mad that they made weed illegal for so long. And it's still illegal federally, you know, but it's at least it's um, legal here in Nevada. But you guys, they are finding out that weed heals everything and it should have never been illegal. And if you think that like a government that was okay to make something, a plant that is from nature that has no harmful things, the worst that happens to someone is they maybe get the munchies and go to sleep on weed. I mean, they even had this kid that they said, oh God, he got into some edibles and he ate the whole thing of edibles, whatever it was. Was, it was either cookies or brownie or whatever, you know? And they're like, oh, what happened? It was like a six-year-old kid. They were, oh, it was on the news when the dispensaries first opened here. They're like, oh, well, he slept for about 12 hours. Oh, geez, really? Okay, what a horrible thing. Let's make sure we shut down society because the kid might sleep for 12 hours. Most parents would be like, Shoo, nice, he's relaxing. Um, and that's there's not harmful things with weed. People will think because they tripped out that that weed is harmful no that's just your brain telling you that um your current situation is not what you want and so you have all these crazy thoughts and it scares you because you're like oh man when i did weed it made me not like my life you're like yeah probably because your life is out of whack if your life is straight you do weed and that's fun and it's helpful and beneficial but when you're out of whack you do it and you're like oh man man i just trip me out and i feel like all this stuff and yeah because you're having clarity so people uh, don't like weed because it, it gives them clarity. Weed is not uh, a drug to um, zone out. Now, you can get stoned and uh, fall asleep, but on a general basis, weed broadens your horizons. It opens your mind. It does not... Um, alcohol just is a uh, depressant, and it um, you know just knocks you out. Um, eventually, you just become unconscious, basically. Weed's not that way. Weed actually you're more aware. So actually, if you mix weed and alcohol, often people will think the weed made them so messed up. What it was is the weed made you realize how wasted you were with alcohol. So you'll be like stumbling around because you're drunk, but you're awake because of the weed. And um, people go, oh, I ain't doing weed again. Oh, I was so wasted. Oh, man. And you were always that wasted. You just didn't know because you blacked out. And that's what I used to, I used to black out drunk all the time. And one time I, um, this is many years ago when I didn't do weed. Cause I started doing weed in 2016. We tried it in Colorado when it was legal and then we got hooked and we came back here. It was, um, medically legal here. So I, I got a medical card. I still have a medical card and, um, cause it's cheaper if you have a medical card than recreational. We can do both, but it's, uh, you get a discount when you do medical. So, um, I still have that medical card. They they give you here in uh, Nevada, you can get a medical card for just headaches. They're really lenient on the weed, which is nice. They should be that way everywhere. But yeah, I remember my first experience uh, when I was still a drinker. This was probably like in 2011. I was at a bar and I was wasted and these guys gave me a little piece of a Rice Krispie treat. And I, it was like a tiny piece. And they said it's really strong. And I was like, okay. And I remember stumbling home. Um, I was walking. But I was remember being so aware of it. Like, I couldn't even walk straight. But it, like, tripped me out. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's so scary. And then I realized all that the weed did is let me know how I walked home every night. Because I was, like, a fall-down drunk. I would I would get drunk at the bars all the time. They'd, I'd leave my stuff. They'd have to call my friends. It'd be a mess. Um, and... I would walk home like that, but I didn't know because I'd always, like, forgot about it. So people get scared of weed, but really you should be scared of the alcohol or whatever other things. Sometimes it'll let you know you're not eating the right food. So when you get the munchies, it's because you're not eating the right food. So all that weed is telling you is that you need to eat right food. So if you eat proper nutrition while you smoke weed, you won't get the munchies. You're getting the munchies because 
you're probably uh, undernourished. You can be obese and be undernourished because you can be obese and be eating all sugar and then you you smoke weed and your body goes, I need protein. Because usually what you're lacking is protein. And the best source of protein is animal meat. Um, a lot of times people are really, really lacking in protein and water. We're very dehydrated as society, especially because of all the caffeine and the sodas. Um... Those all just dehydrate you. And, and juice. Juice is not any better. And juice is just sugar, you guys. You get a little bit of hydration, but you get so much sugar that it just it's not worth it. So And it's right into your bloodstream. So it's just going to be so many added calories. So seriously, if you can cut out beverages and just go to water. I know no one wants water. So I do the sparkling water for a little bit of variety. You have, I have my regular water, and then I do sparkling water. So you get a little... You know, it's got the nice... It's kind of similar to a soda because it has, like, the bubbles... Um, if you like drinking sodas, it's a nice alternative. Jedi Rich used to drink, like, he would drink as many sodas as I would buy in a day. So if I bought 24, he would drink 24. <laughs> like, he, I would, I'd have to, you know, limit how many I bought in a day because he would drink every soda in the fridge. Back when we were bulimic, uh, it was insane. We ate so much food. And it's so expensive. That's what people don't realize, too. And even if you're not bulimic, just the amount you're probably spending if you're going to restaurants. I know... Restaurants were closed for a minute, but now the restaurants are back up and everyone's running back to the restaurants. And it's expensive. Um, the best thing you can do is cook for yourself. And I know you go, oh, I don't have time. But you probably will have more time than you realize if you stop going to, like, restaurants and stuff. Those are not fast. Not even fast food is fast. So when I was bulimic, I used to stop at, um, excuse me. <coughs> cough. So I still cough once in a while because um, I'm healing from my bulimia. So when I smoke weed... It helps get all this stuff out. So I'm not sick when I cough, except for sick in the sense I've been sick for years, but not like a sick, like a cold. Um, but that's when I cough once in a while. But um, anyways, so uh, what was I going to say? I don't remember. But something about the... <laughs> I don't know. I lost my channel. Anyways, you guys, so... Oh, it's super expensive. Oh, yeah. So uh, when I used to go to fast food, I mean, it is not quick anymore. I mean, especially because there's usually a line. So I remember when I, I would stop at, because I'd stop at a couple fast food restaurants on the way home from work. That's what I would do. I um, I didn't cook back then. I would just, I would work all day. And then on the way home, I'd stop at like five fast food restaurants. And then I would go home and binge. And that's what I would do and throw up. Um, that's what I did when I was single and stuff for many years. And so... It would take a long time, though, you guys, because those even the drive through I mean, you got to wait. It's a while. I remember waiting an hour sometimes and, you know, on, on a long day and then on other times about from 15 to 30 minutes through a drive through So you have more time than you realize it. I can make dinner in like 40 minutes, you know, of what we make. And that's what I do. every. So you have more time than you realize if you cut out things like going through drive throughs and going to Starbucks all the time because on our diet, we don't drink any coffee but you're adding a lot of time the time you're making coffee the time you're going to a coffee shop the time you're going to the restaurants all these things when you eat healthy organics you cook at home so you end up with a lot more time because you don't realize how much time you're spending on things like that but yeah i'm really excited for um not to get on the food forever but um people are always questioning me and jai rich because they don't know how we stay thin and they keep thinking it's hereditary or our genes i tell people all the time what i do and they go oh so you just it's in your genes i say no it's not in my genes if i eat regular food i get really fat like really fat like i'm someone i get fat really easy and people go oh you're just lucky oh you're... no i really watch what i eat every day in the sense of like we only eat no it's not like a struggle like once you do it it's simple but i'm saying we only eat certain things we don't we're not i eat organic beef Organic collard greens, organic kale, and organic garlic. That's it. Unless we have to do some wild fish, or like I said, we had to do a little bit of organic chicken. But that's all I eat. So I choose every day to eat only those things. Like, no uh, no um, cheat days. No, I'm just going to, on this one day, have an m and M or whatever. No, no. We only eat that, so we take this very seriously. We do. We have not had caffeine in two years, over two years now. March 2018, last time we had caffeine. Last time we had any beverage other than water 
was March 2018. We take our house super seriously, and it's kind of offensive almost when people are like, oh, it's just hereditary, oh, it's just in your genes. No! I have scoured the internet, I've worked my ass off, I was a bulimic for 15 years, which is not easy either. <laughs> people think, it's not because it becomes an obsession. It might be beginning, in the beginning easy, because you just probably eat normal and then you just throw up, but eventually it becomes an obsession, and then it takes over your life, and it is in no way easy, because it's an addiction and it's as bad as like a heroin addiction because you are just addicted to sugar and addicted to eating and throwing up and you're always hungry because you just threw up so you're hungry again after eating it's just a vicious cycle you you pig out then you throw up so then you're immediately hungry again then you gotta pig out and throw up again and people are struggling with this and it's a terrible way to live and so i found ways but it's not easy in the sense of you can't just go to the restaurant and find something to eat. You can't go to fast food. We can't have anything that's convenient. We have to make everything. And we can't go to family's houses and eat what they make. No, we say, sorry, we can't eat with you. Because my Jai Rich's mother does not like that. I mean, we can't even go to her house because she is very offended if you don't eat what she provides for you. And we say that is not in our, in our diet. I hate to call it diet because it's a lifestyle. Uh, we don't diet like it's not once you cut that stuff out and your body adjusts it's not hard work I mean we eat when we're hungry and we uh, eat till we're full and we don't think about it again but it definitely is not easy in the sense of convenience where you can't when we're out and about we can't just go run when we're hungry we have to be like oh man we gotta wait till we get home and then I gotta cook it and stuff and so sometimes we're like oh man I'm really hungry and the only thing we can chomp on is some collard called I call I Jared gets collard sticks for a snack I literally I pull off the legs of the collard greens and he can chomp on those while I'm cooking if he's really starving I mean that's our snack and some people don't want to take it as seriously as us and that's fine but I'm telling you we have never felt better I'm 35 Jared is 52 we have the best bodies we've ever had in our entire life. We feel great on a day basis. I still get depressed a bit because I have issues. My mom killed herself and my brother died. And I, I just have issues that I still deal with. Um, daddy issues and stuff. But on a daily basis, I feel great. And even when I'm depressed, it's not like before. And when I get depressed now, I don't gain weight because I don't get depressed and then sit around and eat a bunch of sugar or drink a bunch of caffeine. I, even if I'm laying around, I'm on such a diet that it, it doesn't... You can even lay around and not gain weight with the stuff we eat. Like, I, I was depressed in the beginning of this for a good two weeks. I barely got out of bed. You know, I get out a little bit. I'll cook and maybe work a tad bit. But, you know, for the most part, I was, like, in bed because I just didn't... I was depressed. And I couldn't believe I lost weight. I was like, man, I've never been depressed and lost weight. Because normally, just whatever you're eating, if the inactivity, you're just going to gain weight. But we're such fine-tuned machines now that even if we're not being active, our body's just processing. Because when you're eating things like animal protein... And just very light green. So basically, we're just eating an all animal protein diet. It's all organic beef. And then I just throw in some uh, greens and some garlic for flavor. And I, I just love garlic. It's good for you, too. Garlic is really good for you. And so that's what we eat in different variations. We also do, um, you know, a stew. So like we'll, but in the stew is just either um, beef. So either stew beef or um, organic bones. That's what a stew means to us. It's just water. <laughs> organic bones, and I put a little uh, rosemary seasoning. That's it. Cook it for eight hours. That's our stew. So we'll um, eat that. We love the organic bones. It's it's just like the best thing you can have. It's an acquired taste, though. If you're, it's interesting if you've never had it before, but it's delicious. Um, it's so good for you. And I know vegans hate that, and they say, oh, I kill the animals. Well, for one thing, when you're doing organics, you take out that whole animal cruelty thing. That's So no one wants cruelty to animals. I think we can all agree on that. That's why I choose organics, because there isn't cruelty to animals. So I don't want the cruelty to animals either. But with organics, they do cage-free, pasture-raised, grass-fed, um, humane treatment, and no GMOs, no antibiotics, no steroids, all these things. So that's good for the animal and good for you. But animal protein is the best thing you can eat. And it's going to make you feel the best. It's going to make you the leanest. Um, I always see these things of like these vegan athletes that they're kind of like going against the forces. Like, I'm working so hard as a vegan athlete to then get toned when all you have to do is eat animal protein and you tone up like that. <laughs> when you eat all pro animal protein, you tone, you guys. It's just, 
It's just the way it is. That's what happened with me and Jai Rich. We eat animal protein and we just tone. I don't even do crunches or anything and I'm getting like six packs, same with Jai Rich. It's just from the animal protein. So I'm telling you, if you're struggling with your weight, you have to eat animal meat. Now, uh, if you feel, oh, I don't want to eat things that are dead, well, you are even if you're eating plants. Plants are living. When you eat them, they're dead, so you're still eating death. People say that weird argument, and they'll say things like it's bad for the environment. The amount of plants you have to eat uh, compared to the amount of protein is way harsher on the environment because here's the deal. You only need X amount of protein, but to get enough... Uh, oh, sorry. X amount of protein from... Um, a day, but you know, from the animals gives you a, a huge amount to get the same amount. Sorry, I'm all times. From plants would be so much plants. So, for like my example earlier, like seven grams of protein. To get seven grams of protein from plants, you need a lot of plants. Um, and they also have high sugar. That's the thing, but people act like animals are more wasteful than plants. They say, well, you gotta feed the animals. Okay, well, animals are gonna be here, right? Unless we wanna like. What are we going to do with the animals if we stop eating them? Are you all going to take them into your house? All the pigs, all the cows, every, all of them? I mean, it's it's kind of ridiculous. These vegans come up with these things that are, it's just nonsense. And the celebs jump on it, and then they tell you to be a vegan as they go and throw up in private. And that the biggest ones right now are the Biebers and Miley Cyrus and Ariana Grande. And they're all getting fat. If you guys don't notice, the thing is they wear huge clothes. So they're still thin, but they're getting fatter than they were because bulimia a lot of times doesn't work forever. Like I said, you can still gain weight with bulimia, especially if you're eating a lot of sugary things or a lot of caffeine. You're still going to gain weight even if you're throwing up. And so what they're doing is they're wearing more clothes. Like, they hide themselves more. They wear bigger things. Like, Justin Bieber's really into that Drew stuff, which is just huge sweatshirts. And then, like, Ariana Grande is into wearing these huge skirts. They act like it's like, okay, see, this dress is a bell dress. Okay, this is what... These go out like this, as you see. And it's, you know, um... It, it, was, it was a style. It was just supposed to be cute. Well, what they've done now is they've used it to hide their body. So what they do is they make this, they show, you know, just this part where everyone is thin up here, and then they make the dress go out like this where it's huge. And so then you think, and then, like, Ariana Grande wears these huge boots, so you think she's still small because you're not really seeing her body. She has this, I mean, you guys should see, she just came out with a new video, Lady Gaga and Ariana Grande. I watched it this morning. I was like, oh, my God. Ariana Grande's outfits, the tiny bit they show her, they show just, you have to, you barely catch her because they're showing such quick clips of her, because you guys, she's put on a lot of weight, because Ariana Grande used to be tiny, um, and they do these skirts that are just ridiculous, I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's huge now, these skirts, they're just like, they don't have a, they have like their own form to them, like, it's like, like they're, they're a metal or something, like they stick out, <laughs> it's weird, you gotta check it out, her newest one, but... The thing is, they are trying to hide their bodies. More and more in the music videos, they're doing more distractions and crazy outfits and things and sitting in bathtubs and things to hide their body of just constantly hiding their bodies. Even like Taylor Swift dressed up like a man, that's also a way to hide your body. You know, you, men clothes are baggy, you know, in like her latest video. All of them are gaining weight and then they're, but Taylor actually does show she's put on weight and she shows her bigger body. She's put, she's wearing them shorter outfits. I'll give her some credit. She's rocking a, a larger body than she used to. She's not fat, but she's just bigger than she used to be. Um, and that's something they're all getting bigger and that'd be all right for them to tell people, but instead they hide it a lot of them. Taylor, not as much, but Ariana Grande, no one knows she's gained weight. I mean, you can barely get a photo of her. If you go to like her Twitter or her, um, Instagram, she barely posts things. And when she does, it's usually other people now. I mean, it's like half her head. She, I mean, it's, she barely shows her body. And when she does, she's in one of those outfits or she's in a sweatshirt something really big, a huge gown, ridiculous gowns that are just huge. And the problem with that is then you have these um, young people that will look at old photos of Ariana Grande and say, oh, I want to look like Ariana Grande, thinking she looks a certain way, and they, they can't achieve this body. And then they say, what is Ariana Grande? Oh, she drinks Starbucks all day, and she's a vegan, because that's what they're telling. And same with Miley, they're telling them they're vegans. So then this young person says, I'm going to be a vegan, and I'm going to drink Starbucks all day, because Ariana Grande's doing that, and she's thin. When, for one thing, she's not even that thin anymore. She's hiding her body. 
And the other thing is she's bulimic. So the, that child now is just being lied to. And what happens is the universe has a way of balancing these things out. So the longer the celebs lie to everyone, the uglier they're getting. Like Miley Cyrus, I used to think was very pretty. I thought she was beautiful in um, 2013, I think it was, when she did that MTV um, the one that the big controversial one with, uh, what was his name? Uh, Robin Thicke, you know, where she was grinding up on him. She looked amazing. I mean, her body was phenomenal. I used to think I wanted a body just like hers. That's when I was uh, chubby. I was like, and she was like a role model to me. I was like, wow, she was rocking it. And she looked amazing and she was smoking weed and she was probably partying and she was being honest. She was telling everyone what she did. Remember, she was telling everyone she's a wild girl. And then all of a sudden she tried to go this you know, sober Christian life and got married and told everyone to do this. And then just the thing is, the more these people lie to themselves and lie to everyone else. Now she's all telling everyone to quarantine during when there wasn't a deadly virus. They knew that. A lot of these celebs knew that. They knew it wasn't. They're Democrats, a lot of them. Like I said, this was a very political, this whole thing. So now they're starting to get uglier. And I believe it's like karma on them you know like Miley look I saw some new photos she looks terrible she chopped off her hair it looks awful and I'm not trying to be mean I'm just saying when you go around lying to people the universe will just for one thing you yourself your feelings will make you feel like crap when you every day wake up and know you're a liar that you're lying to yourself you're lying to your family you're lying to your friends you're lying to your fans lying to whoever it may be your co-worker your wife your whatever you know Every day that drains on you. And a lot of these people, you're starting to see it. And uh, they just don't look as good as when they were alive and when they were being free and when they were being honest. And um, I know people, oh, well, you can't be honest about everything, but you can be honest about a lot of things, you know, to the public. Yeah, some people need some privacy to themselves, you know, a little bit, but not to the level that these celebs where they're telling people to do one thing while they're doing the opposite thing. Or telling people to be abstinent from sex while they're fucking everyone. That's the thing a lot of the Disney stars do, which is nonsense. So they tell young people to not have sex while they're fucking everyone. And it's like, you should not be telling these young people that. That's bullshit because you guys don't do it either. And no one does, you know, um, except for a couple of Christian things. I did for a while. I did the true love weights. I didn't have sex till I was in the military because uh, I was going to wait till marriage. Because of that nonsense, and a bunch of celebs were doing that at the time, too. I remember when I was young. I don't remember who it was now, but um, that was a thing. You know, everyone was getting their true love weight rings for you. Wait, you know, the religious bullshit. But then you don't even, like, as the young girl, you think everyone's doing what you're doing. But then it turns out they're not even living up to what they're telling you to do. And um, so I was obsessed with celebs when I was young with the magazines and stuff. I scoured the People magazine and the... Us Weekly, or is it U.S. Weekly or Us Weekly? I've never figured out what that magazine is. It's Us Weekly, but it could be either one. But, um, and I, I wanted to be like all the stars. That's how I started my eating disorders. And I, it didn't take me till recently to realize how many of them were lying to me all along. And now when I watch the old movies, I'm like, man, they were all bulimic. They were all on drugs. They were all, most of them were on speed in the old movies, they were just straight up on speed um, in a lot of the old movies. And then if it wasn't speed, then it's caffeine. Everyone's jacked up on caffeine now, you guys. And caffeine is speed. At the end of the day, you guys, it is low doses of speed. Do you think people that are on meth or speed look good long term? Neither do people that have been on caffeine for 20 years. And that's why we've ad adjusted that we just think old people look like crap. We're just, oh, when they get old, they just look old and fat and ugly. And it's just the way they used to be attractive. But now, you know, they're, they're old. There's, you don't have to be that way. That's one of the big things is caffeine that's making you age. Because it, you're a meth head when you're doing caffeine. You guys are meth addicts when you are addicted to caffeine. And you need to realize it unless you just want to be fat and get uglier because that's what's going to happen because meth is not good for your system long term <laughs> you can maybe do it once in a while like it was meant to maybe once in a while you get a little boost a little caffeine or whatever you know it was something in nature not to the level people are doing it now 
where they're just downing caffeine all day long. And then for one thing, it dehydrates you. So just that alone is terrible for your skin, your hair, everything, for all your organs. We're made up of 80% water. You need a lot of water all day long. Otherwise, things don't function as well. Yeah, your potassium gets all out of whack. Potassium regulates your water. You need water and caffeine. Every time you drink coffee, you actually just dehydrate yourself. So it's counterproductive. To, like you're drinking beverages that are not hydrating you in any way they're dehydrating you so right there alone is not good for your body because water is wonderful for your complexion for um i used to break out more i still do once in a while but um, i don't wear any face makeup but i used to have like a lot of zits now i once in a while get a little bit of like i have a little bit of red right here but i don't mess with it i just leave it let it be i put some lotion i put cbd lotion actually on my face we have this wonderful CBD um, weed lotion from Canna Hemp. Canna Hemp's wonderful. If you guys are in um, Vegas, um, you can order com. You can actually just order from their warehouse, and then they ship it to you, but it comes within like a day or two if you're local. And it's free shipping. So it's they used to sell it like a, at a lot of the dispensaries, but they don't as much anymore. You can just go directly, like a, they're wholesale. And um, it's wonderful for, uh, we use the um, lotion um, for everything, and then we also use the Active X, which is like this um, recovery cream, if for if you have pains and aches, like it's kind of like an icy hot, but it's got tons of CBDs and it. it's really good. But yeah, locally, if you guys, um, I don't know, you know, what's if you have a similar stuff in some other states, but some states that have CBDs will have some sort of CBD lotion. But yeah, we get it from Canna Hemp, and it's like twenty six dollars for the for a good jar of the lotion, and it lasts a while. I mean, it's not expensive. It's really great, and um, you might think that sounds like a lot, but no, this is like this is really healing lotion, and so we use it as face moisturizer, um, a lo to lotion all over our body. It's really wonderful, um, and. Caffeine, the insulin is the issue where day in and day out, if you keep telling your body to produce insulin, you're going to keep telling your body to go into depressed mode, store fat, be dormant, go into hibernation like a bear. So that's why you keep having to do more caffeine and it's just become this vicious cycle, but you're getting more and more tired because... Every time you're doing the caffeine, you're telling your body that you want to relax, that you want to chill. So it's it's really this contradiction because you're thinking you're doing the caffeine for energy to be motivated to go to the gym, to do, but you're telling your body the exact opposite thing. So you're really saying, let me drink this caffeine to go to the gym, but then you're telling your body, store fat and be dormant and relax and go to sleep. So it's, you're like, what? <laughs> And I'm telling you, no one wants to let go of the caffeine because you're addicted. I mean, if you don't want to get rid of caffeine, you're addicted. I mean, bottom line. And if you get headaches and stuff, that's called withdrawals. <laughs> you're highly addicted. If you get headaches or if you are super tired when you don't have your caffeine, it's because you're addicted. And it might be hard to quit. It was super hard for me. The hardest month of my life was the first month I quit caffeine. No joke. It's not easy. I was highly addicted. And I was out of it for like a month. I couldn't get out. I was like so freaking tired. Like it was like everything felt like I had like weights on my legs. Like, like you know like when, how people put those weights like to work out? I felt like I had that everywhere as I took steps. I was like, oh, I just had no energy because I had gotten so into the habit. My body had acclimated to adapt to like, okay, this is, you're going to think this is going to, because most of it's even, a lot of it, people get, um, uh, the en they get, you know, uh, they start to wake up even before they have their coffee, just the thought of the coffee. So it's not even a lot of times the caffeine. It's just like, oh, I know I'm going to, like they get out of bed to make their cup of coffee, but you're already out of bed. You don't need to make the coffee now. But, like, they won't get out of bed unless they think about making their coffee. That's funny, but, like, they're already out of bed. They don't need to make coffee. They got out of bed. But then they go, oh, I need to make coffee. No, you're already up. You're fine. Just keep going. But um, I know it was hard for me. Once I didn't have something to get out of bed for, like, if I didn't make coffee, I'd be like, I don't want to get up. I literally didn't want to get out of bed if I didn't get up to make coffee. And some of you might experience that if you've tried to quit. Then you're like, Ugh, what am I going to get up for? I can't make coffee. But I'm telling you, if you want to feel good, lose weight, 
and look younger, like start to look younger and younger. Like me and Jairus feel like we're like the healthier we get, the younger we look. Now we know, okay, we are older, so we're not going to look certain young, but we look younger than we were looking when we were unhealthy, if that makes sense. Like, I was looking older. If you look at some older photos of me, you'll think I was older then than now, you know, so at certain points in my life. Like, I look like I was, like, 40 when I was, like, in my 20s, and now I'm 35, and I don't know how old I look, but I probably like 35. But anyways, um, I'm going to get off here now. Yeah, so thanks, guys. A couple photos for the, uh... What did I do? Funny for, photos uh, for the YouTube. YouTube. Because right. they look funny. <laughs> and then Jerry puts me on funny things like motorcycles and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we crop her in. We crop her in. She's, she's, she's a card.